Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Commander Hall. Hopefully you guys is having a good morning. Right now I just finished wrapping up on my second site of the day. Um, so far so good, didn't have any issues on, um, on any of the sites. That's always good. <laughs> But anyways, guys, um, in this video, I wanted to discuss something, kind of piggybacking off some videos that I've been watching recently. Uh, you guys know, and I have already explained to you guys the reason why I haven't really been releasing content like I used to. And I'd be trying to get back into it, but it don't always work that way. Um, but in this video, I just want to kind of piggyback off some videos that I have been watching uh, You know, recently. You know, Mike Everest released some videos. Damien, Sean is constantly releasing videos, you know, and a lot of you... Uh, other youtubers out there that I be following and, and, and watching you guys content but in this video I wanted to discuss um, about security officers actually detaining uh, individuals um, can we detain the answer to that is yes um, you know are we able to make arrests yes we can make citizens arrests here in Florida we do not have uh, arresting authority like arresting power but we can perform a citizen arrest. Uh, the thing is, like I discuss all the time, is uh, should you do it is the, is the main question or whatever. So uh, let's go over that a little bit, guys. Now, first thing I wanna discuss is not all detainment is actually physical. I'm not sure if you guys knew that or not, but you could actually verbal, verbally detain someone as well. You know, for example, if you see a group of teenagers uh, abusing a elderly person, for example, you could actually use verbal commands, tell those teenagers that they are not free to leave and that they're going to have to wait for the authorities and you sit there and keep an eye on them. That's actually detaining them too. You're stopping them from leaving or whatever, but you're doing it from a verbal standpoint. Now, you can physically detain people is what, you know, what most people talk about when they talk about detaining someone is, you know, with, um, you know, some people use, you know, your handcuffs, some people use the zip tie cuffs, whatever, uh, you are preventing someone from moving, you know, um, they're not able to use their limbs, they're not able to use their hands because you have them um, restrained. You know pretty much so that's another way so remember guys you got the physical detainment and then you have the verbal now let me give you an illustration and this is something that i teach my guys all the time i remember one time my guy one of my guys asked me so if i'm doing a foot patrol and i witness someone breaking into someone's car you know should i detain them and i told him it depends here's a good scenario right here if i'm on foot doing foot patrol and I see someone attempting to break in someone's car, if that person don't see me, I'm not gonna do anything to bring attention on myself. I'm just gonna simply get on my radio, call for the local authorities, you know, provide them with a description of the, the individual, you know, clothing, uh, location, you know, all that good stuff. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna get my hands dirty. I'm gonna let law enforcement come and handle that. That's if the individual didn't see me. Now, if the individual will see me and take off running, obviously we're not gonna do a foot chase with the individual. Again, we're gonna call the local authorities. We're gonna give them full description, you know, the direction they going, you know, and hopefully they catch them. So this guy will learn his lesson with doing that. Now, here's the other uh, scenario. Sometimes people don't want to be caught. And when they are caught, by a authority figure, a lot of times they want to try to eliminate that authority figure. So a lot of times they may try to eliminate the threat. Now we're reversing things because the bad guy gonna look at you as a threat. They may already have outstanding warrants. They may already be wanted for something or whatever. And now you just saw them. The fact that you saw them, you made eye contact with them. You know what they look like now it may become their goal to eliminate you so they think they, they can get away with what they was attempting to do so in that instance now you may have to go hands on whether you're using your your fists and your 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 legs your feet whatever um you may have to use some of your arsenal that you have on your duty belt or your uh you know your vest 
whether it's a taser, whether it's pepper spray, whether it's a firearm, um, you may have to go in that direction. Or you may just simply be able to outpower this individual. And if that's the case, then you can place that individual in cuffs, physically detaining them, stopping movement, waiting for the authorities to arrive and take over. So yes, we can detain people. Now, let's discuss going hands-on with people. Obviously, you guys know if someone try to attack you, you have the right to defend yourself. That's one illustration, but let's talk about loss prevention, guys. Those guys in loss prevention actually, a lot of times are trained to physically stop people from shoplifting. So those guys can touch you. A lot of times they will touch you. You go in some of these establishments and you try to steal, they will tackle you or they may try to take the product from you or whatever. And of course, if you try to strike them, they are gonna defend themselves and do what they are trained to do. Same as just a regular uh, security officer, even in law enforcement, you going to protect yourself, you going to defend yourself if someone is trying to attack you. So in that situation, you can go hands on. I don't think it's anyone who won't go hands on trying to defend himself if someone is trying to uh, attack them. Now you can retreat, but I mean, we'll discuss that in another video with retreating, but most people isn't gonna retreat. You know, your life is on the line. Uh, you gonna, you know, square up and do what you have to do. Um, so yes, guys, again, security officers loss prevention which is a part of security can touch you you know it just depends on the contract it just depends on the type of uh security because guys it's different types of security it's different levels to this thing guys so uh you know not all security is a hundred percent hands off you know um some security is hands on you know but it got to be situational you know, it just depends on the situation. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on the contract on what you do and what you don't do. But again, and I'm going to end it with this. I always tell my guys and tell everyone. Don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. Go out there and make a difference. Go out there and make a statement when it's time to do that. I get tired of hearing people talk about what we can't do and everything. It's a lot of things we can do. It's just sometimes we have to have certain things checked off before we can do certain things compared to law enforcement. In law enforcement, if you come up to me and say, hey, this guy just attacked me and I see that you have bruises and cuts and blood, okay, I'm gonna go detain that person. I'm gonna investigate the situation and see what's going on. You know, if I figured out that the situation isn't true and something else happened, it may be you end up going to jail and then that person will be released. If the situation is true, guess what? We're gonna book this guy and this guy going to take a trip to jail. When it comes up to security, same situation. This guy attacked me. Even if the person is bleeding and have cuts and everything, you have to decide, okay, if I detain this person, you got to remember, most people ain't gonna just sit there and let you grab them. Most people are gonna put up a fight. So if you go through all that and let's say that the person was lying and it happened earlier or someone else did it or whatever, now you facing a lawsuit, you're probably gonna get terminated. The company you're working for probably gonna lose the contract. I think it was Mike Everest who said it. These people pay you pretty much to be a, a, a walking alarm system. Because at the end of the day, even if they pay you to be armed, they don't want you to shoot anyone. Even if you're defending yourself, they don't want that. Because as soon as you do it, they're going to let you go. And push come to shove, they'll just throw you out there to the wolves. Same thing with handcuffing, detaining. You go out there and do it. Someone go back to the uh, the client complaining that you messed up their hand, you messed up their wrist. What you think the client going to do? Nine times out of ten, they're going to kick you to the curve. So you got to think about that, guys, before you go hands-on. You got to think about that before you try to uh, uh, do things that you could avoid doing. 
always tell my guys, if it's not a situation when you just force and you just absolutely have to do it, that's the last result. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts. It just have to happen. Let's let law enforcement do it. We doing our part by reporting the information. Let's, do, let's let them do their part. So we working together. We do our part. They do their part. They do their investigation. Whatever the outcome is, it's the outcome. But let's try not to do too much and end up, you know, getting jammed up ourselves. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. I'm done uh, talking. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and again, as I always say, please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.